once again it's some big macro issues leaving I suppose a couple of big stocks alone for a minute macro issues dominating. James, the market opened with hope this morning and it ended looking those macro issues squarely in the eye. In fact, if we have a look at one of the risk indicators, the put to call ratio on the options market, it ended at 1.34, showing that investors are a lot more concerned with insuring their portfolios against falls than they were bullish on the market today. Of course, if we have a look at what's concerning the market at the moment, not only do we have the European risks, but the US economy and the end of QE2, as well as China. And if we have a look at China it does have a big impact on the Australian market and China very much in focus today we saw Credit Suisse uh, downgrade its 2012 growth forecast to eight and a half percent and an unusual thing about the Shibor now the Shibor is the overnight rate in China and we saw it spiking 297 basis points overnight that's almost three percent and what we're seeing kick into gear are the new reserve uh, ratio requirements so in the short term overnight liquidity really drying up as banks in China scramble to fulfill those new reserve requirement ratios. The Shanghai Composite down by about 1.2 percent. The big turnaround in the Australian market really driven by that material space. It started off flat, it managed to rise in the morning and by the end of the session it was one of the worst performing sectors on our market. We saw the material sector coming under pressure, the energy sector absolutely smashed down by 2.1 percent. Oil prices at four month lows, Caltex, Woodside all coming under pressure. So altogether a pretty disappointing session for the Aussie share market. The last two hours we saw the euro losing 40 pips and the Australian market simply following suit. Sentiment further down the road and not that much further actually in terms of quantitative easing too when it's expected uh, wind up happens. Do we expect that to become yet another headwind for global markets? James, there is a wall of worry at the moment. At the moment, the number one focus is the Greek situation, the European sovereign debt. But you're right, once we see, see a resolution to that, the next thing the market's going to be focusing on is the end of QE2, which comes next week. Next week is the 30th of June when the QE2 pro program ends. There will be a little bit of QE light and a bit of um, just, I guess, uh, cutting of the hedges and taking a few haircuts. If we have a look at QE Light, there are some operations scheduled for the 7th as well as the 11th of July for two and a half to three and a half billion dollars. But really what we're looking at is the end of QE2. And we've already seen Russia, China lightening their load in terms of US Treasuries. In fact, in the last year, we've seen Russia selling out of US Treasuries by about 30% of its holding and indicating that it is looking to sell more. In fact, if we have a look at the impact of QE, usually Actually, the US market has a very strong correlation with US domestic equity inflows and outflows. In fact, before QE1 started, this correlation, positive correlation between fund inflows and the US S&P 500 index stood at about 94%. During QE1, it was interesting to see this drop to a negative over 50% reading. And then during the lull between QE1 and QE2, we saw this recovering once again to 75%. What we have seen during QE2 is constant weekly fund outflows and yet the S&P 500 has been rising. Now this isn't a normal situation and it's the reason why a lot of people think that quantitative easing has been helping to inflate assets like the equity markets and commodities. Now the Australian market after the end of QE1 fell by 16.9% and it, it fell more than other markets because we are heavily weighted towards those commodity stocks. So not surprising to see all oil at four month lows now ahead of the end of QE2. Commodity is coming under pressure and the equity market's coming under pressure as well. So Julia, do you think we should be concerned? Obviously, as you say, we are very uh, commodity uh, exposed, if you like, in terms of our equity market. And if, if I suppose history repeats in terms of the cessation of quantitative easing without a two and a half or without a third on the horizon, are we looking at further and big steeper falls? I guess it is a bit, bit of an experiment at the moment, but if we have a look at the effects of QE1 and the correlation with fund inflows, it would suggest that quantitative easing has helped to inflate assets like the equity markets and uh, the commodity markets. And during quantitative easing, we have seen these normal traditional relationships break down. Usually, if we see fund inflows, that's a positive for the equity markets. We see a large amount of fund outflows. Well, that's negative for equity markets. But during quantitative easing, what we have seen is massive fund outflows. In fact, I think it's 325 
a billion dollars worth of outflows that we've seen and yet still we've seen the S&P 500 over the last couple of years managing a rise. So a lot of concern over the impact of the end of QE2 um, and the impact that's going to have across equities as well as commodities. But as Michael mentioned, you know, we see an easing in commodity prices, oil prices. That should be good news in terms of global growth and the economy. But then uh, we have seen a bit of a breakdown in that relationship as well. The U.S. economy, the weakest out of Australia, China and the U.S. And yet it's the best performing stock market out of the three uh, in the last couple of years.